so first of all let, let's just uh, I just wanted to present you with something that you've probably seen before and it's it's worth thinking about and I'm not suggesting that this is what's going on right now but it's just it's just worth having a little think right so we're probably all aware of the Wall Street cheat sheet right so don't get scared because I'm showing you this uh, I wanted to put it into context so obviously this is the sign of a, of a bubble pop right and um, and, uh, and the peak of a, of a market uh, the overvaluation of a market and uh, and then the the impending collapse of, of that whatever it is that you're trading so this could be my cryptocurrency as a whole it could be a particular altcoin you know uh, or it could just be you know Bitcoin and obviously the rest of the market so when we look at this now I mean it doesn't really look like Bitcoin and also when we look at Bitcoin uh, we um, we we don't have the same signal signs as opposed on the money flow index and the RSI and um, that we that we have had in these three previous peaks so um, bubble pop territory was here here and here which is an interesting thing um, now the reason I'm, I'm bringing this one up is like if you've been watching my channel for a while we were talking about look any, any time you know you, you know me anytime I see anything above 94 to 96 on the money flow and it's on a weekly I just say I, I always say leave it alone all right I just say look it's just just leave it <laughs> just leave it alone all right so this is a clear bubble pop this was a pretty clear well we'll call it a bubble pop we'll just call them tops all right we'll call them tops uh, and this obviously was a relatively good indicator for the top of here right in January now if you remember I'm sure you do and um, because it's been a pretty good year from January if the money flow index here that represents an absolute top for Bitcoin came in at this level what then happened was that we did see money leave the asset we did see um, Bitcoin come down to the tune of about 30% or something it was roughly about 30% maybe a little bit more from the from the bottom to the from the top to the bottom about 32% but also we saw at that same moment we saw money going into altcoins like absolutely no tomorrow right so normally when we would see this we'd go oh my god get out of this asset and it was true it was the right time to get out of it and there was also very clear signs on the money flow index to uh, to get in not the money flow index bloody hell on Bitcoin dominance very clear entry point to scale into altcoins you know historical um, uh, reads would say uh, this is very toppy for Bitcoin and uh, you know that that proved to be a, a good call basically let's get out of Bitcoin let's go into altcoins altcoins weren't anything like what they were today three, uh, you know three or four months ago it's almost feels like a lifetime ago but a lot of these altcoins were absolutely wrecked they were completely wrecked right so completely different story to what they are right now they're well I mean they're parabolic aren't they really they are parabolic so I mean just just uh, just go with me on this one I'm not making any calls or predictions and again with my video today it wasn't about um, you know I'm still bearish we're going to zero or anything like that if you watch my video it's it, that's what not what it was it was like until we until we reach and and get above 60,000 and start to get the ball rolling again for Bitcoin I'm, I'm prepared for further downside that's all I was really saying I mean um, technically I stand by that and uh, Obviously, when you make videos about bearish, yeah, a bearish undertone to them, um, you you just don't get the views. Do you know what I mean? No one watches, and I'm never really particularly bothered about views. It's just, I just find the whole thing interesting, and actually, you start to get nasty comments. You know, um, some some geezer calling me an idiot, just for you know, just just for explaining you know what you know the fact that we we were a lower low and a, and a, and a lower high. I mean. <laughs> I mean that is it. I mean it's it's pretty, pretty basic stuff, right? So in, until until we change that, then uh, then technically it's still a downtrend to me, which is what it is. You know, it's just it's basic basic stuff. Anyway, I'm I'm not suggesting that everything's going to come crashing back down. So let, let's just get back to where I was. I, I went off track already. So what I'm saying is that if we if we merge the Wall the Wall Street cheat sheet, and um, so you just got to bear with me on this one, all right? So just this is just theory. So bear with me on this one. So we we merge the Wall Street cheat sheet with the fact that we found a top here on the money flow index, top here on the money flow index, and a top here for Bitcoin. Uh, and then what happened was we had a giant rotation into altcoins um, over here, 
and there and then now what we could be looking at is a similar kind of and it's going to involve a, you know a, i suppose you to try and visualize what's what what this top is and why it could potentially be different and look at it in the form of altcoins rather than bitcoin and then perhaps maybe if we think about merging the two together then we could be looking at a temporary top for this area in the market right so let me just try and put, boil that down so it's a bit simpler i suppose because i suppose it, I, i've not I've not really explained it very well so uh, in, in a nutshell um bitcoin is able to give us and has given us tops in the past with the money flow index bang 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 just like anything else would 94 to 96 usually gets a top on the money flow index so we got that bang 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 january top then flow of money out of bitcoin into altcoins as we see here massive amount of money leaving bitcoin going into altcoins right making people rich making people really rich you know doing some real difference to people's balances all right so massively undervalued altcoins here literally wrecked completely wrecked altcoins possibly overvalued altcoins at this level ready for a potential pop um in in my opinion i think we're getting quite close to this i've just been skipping around through some of these altcoins now and you know, the, you know, I mean, when we're looking at money flow index, it's, it's, it's neither here nor there. But we've got bearish divergence here. Uh, we, we've got bearish divergence on most things. XRP just does its own thing anyway. <laughs> it's, it's completely different. But I mean, we are looking potentially quite overvalued when it comes to us, but not so much these top caps. You know how I felt about the top caps over the last four or five weeks. They are quite strong. But small caps, I suppose, um, a different story. You know, this is this is mega bearish divergence, but <clears throat> doesn't mean that they can't can't carry on. What we're looking at is parabolic moves. So this is a good example, Stormex. I know uh, someone's asked me to look at this, so we will look at it. Um, but we'll look at it separately. So this is just one example of something that's just gone parabolic, right? Um, there's there's many, 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 as we are, we're all aware, altcoins that have gone parabolic. Now, what do they look like now? Let's just have a look at Stormex, for example. What does this look like? Does it look a little bit like? Um, uh, the, uh, the the old Wall Street cheat sheet does it perhaps maybe does it perhaps maybe look a little bit like that parabolic move crash back down nice bounce obviously maybe even a 50% bounce um, and then you know are we going to just continue to come down let's just have a look so you know big move up crash back down an even bigger recovery move you know just crash back down uh, we're just cooling off everything's okay continuing to go down this is a, a daily here so this isn't the prime example, but I'm just trying to uh, point something out here. Parabolic moves um, are excellent when you're in at the bottom and you've made your money. And then what do you do after that? You you take your profit, you move into perhaps maybe just Tether or you go into maybe Bitcoin, which is what has happened, I think, when we look at Bitcoin's chart. So we, we have had this peak here. Money flow index reached its top. Bitcoin dominance reached its peak. Money came out of Bitcoin. Um, you know, the sentiment for cryptocurrency started to get more fun um, as people discovered altcoins again. You know, let's let's go in. Altcoins are rallying, uh, and then you know, as people start taking profit, because during this period here, they're, they're, people have done five x's easily. Some people have done ten x's, you know, and people continued to make more all this way up right until or up until I suppose a week ago when things were basically still going up massively. Right. So in summary. It's not as easy as looking at the Wall Street cheat sheet and then looking at Bitcoin or the Wall Street cheat sheet and looking at the overall market. There is there's a there's there's a there's some kind of um, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. There's there's a way to piece the put the pieces together to think that things aren't as simple as people like to make them out to be. Um, we can't just look at the Wall Street cheat sheet and stick that, uh, uh, overlay that onto, you know, Bitcoin, for instance, and go, well, that's not right. There's plenty of room to move, and there is. And you know how I feel about this uh, trend line, and uh, this we should get a decent bounce from this one. I just feel as though we are getting a little bit peaky, um, if not for Bitcoin, but for a lot of altcoins. And you know, when, once you, once you've reached your 10x um, or even more, uh, or even just a 5x, think about what that means. Right? A 5x is is you, you know, you have made five times your money back on, on an asset that you might have even only just bought um, a month or two ago, 
or three if you bought it back in January. That's a pretty good return, to be honest with you. But we all we we designed to overreach, aren't we? As as humans, we always want a little bit more. And there's this psychological issue that that we all f probably feel, and I do as well, um, which is that um, we have reached. You know, let's just look at um, let's look at Stormex for an example. We we could say, well, look, yeah, this is been pretty good this was its top over here it even reached here I was in from down here but now I'm over here I wish I could have just sold here if we can get back up to there I will sell again now that kind of mentality might just keep you in here it'll keep you in down here it might keep you in down here then suddenly you're at break even then suddenly you're at a minus because the psychological issue that you've got is that you, you wish you could wind back time and sell at the peak. No one can sell at the peak. No one can get at the bottom. No one can get out at the top. What you do is you tr you buy a trending move and when the trend is over, then you either limit your exposure or you sell all uh, and wait for another entry point. So this is, in my, you know, my, my opinion, I think we are getting close to a peak. Um, and one other thing I would say about it is the the bearish divergence that we have on pretty much all time frames. On the, uh, the, the I mean, this is a this is a pretty uh, messy looking one, but it is bearish divergence on the weekly here. Um, you know, just because we have a trend line doesn't necessarily mean that we have to tap it. It is still bearish divergence. We have um, highs, lower high, lower high, wherever this lower high could be, with a high, high, high. We also have it on the daily. We've got it on all all the major time frames. The daily one looks even worse, I would say, um, and um, and and probably a bit more rhythm to it. So here we go, various divergence, bang 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 bang, um, that corresponds to high 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 high. So uh, you know there are warning signals here already, and um, there's no 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 one really knows what the exact. Uh, moment a pop a, a pop or a, or a nasty consolidation will take place at but when we do have some tools some basic tools that um, don't always play out I mean look if we if we saw this we go hang on we got bearish divergence over here we still made a higher high and we could still make a higher high again but it's still a very basic but you know worthy warning sign that we do have bearish divergence on, on all major time frames on Bitcoin alone. The Bitcoin, you know, you could argue, and I would say that it is te technically overvalued already to this stage in the market cycle. We've got the rest of the year, we've got a good six months or more before the predetermined that everyone suggests four year cycle has come to an end. Um, but it uh, doesn't mean that we can't pop beforehand. We popped over here, didn't we? Uh, we rallied and we popped. Uh, we could pop here, we could come down, and then we could still have plenty of time to recover by the end of the year. And that leads me on to one more other thing. I know this probably sounds really depressing, but um, it's worth thinking about. And if you think, just just before I, I make you all really depressed with that, I just want you to, to recognize how far we've come so far. How far we've all come. And, you know, most people, I mean, even a blind monkey probably would have been able to make money in this market um, over the last six to eight months. It would have been very hard to not make money in the in the last six to eight months um but crypto is not always like that it's 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 notoriously not like that anyway i mean you can look at it in the long term and go of course it just goes up it goes up forever man what are you talking about and this is just the binance chart if you were to look at the entire you know history of bitcoin you go listen it just goes up what are you talking about and that is true it does just go up um but what strategy are you looking to play um and uh, I've almost finished this rant um, or monologue or whatever you want to call it. And then people would say to me, uh, I've got a lot of people now, you know, friends and uh, and acquaintances that know that this is how you know I've, I've made, you know I, I dabble in the crypto. They they they're coming to me now saying, oh, how do I get into this? How do I buy this? I'm interested now because Elon Musk and Tesla bought into it. So that kind of get, gives it some kind of. Um, uh, seal of approval like some kind of um, foundation for the rest of the world to find more confidence in it and that's true it is true but Tesla's strategy is is going to be very different to our strategy Tesla's strategy is almost certainly going to be over a much longer period of time same with all these other institutional investors they know what's coming they know that there's a market cycle they know it's going to go up and down and the only way it's not going to go is left um, 
they know that but they see a bigger picture and in, in, in you know in any any company or in anyone you know i i should you know any anyone of you should really always try and plan your life out you know in in you know in years and how where do you want to be in two three four five years you know what do you want to achieve how are you going to get there one thing is a, a company could do like tesla would be to i'll tell you what i'm going to we're going to buy bitcoin we're going to buy bitcoin around about this zone here the end of this market cycle we might see a 65 percent retracement if we get to a hundred thousand dollars or so let's just say we get to a hundred thousand dollars a 65 percent retracement uh, will bring us down to our entry point no big deal uh, if that happens we buy we buy more um, you know, I say 65, which is a bit more conservative than than our previous uh, pops, um, because uh, of the institutional money has will likely take a lot of the uh, uh, the supply away, and so the the drops in the future, I think, you know, even though we'll go into bear markets that will be long and drawn out like they happened in the past, I think that the overall downside will be less. It's not not no guarantee. It's just a theory. But what I was saying is that their 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 um, strategy is going to be different to yours. So the average retail investor is, is going to see something like that on the news. Oh, Tesla bought into Bitcoin, right? Well, you know he knows what he's doing. They know what they're doing. I'm going to buy some. It doesn't defy the, uh, the you know the uh, the fact that it can obviously play out a full market cycle, and Tesla will be quite happy with that. They've already taken some profit already, haven't they? So, but their overall goal is you know five, ten years down the line security i suppose of the overall grand picture of bitcoin which is that it just continues to go up over the long term doesn't mean that we're going to be safe in our investments at this level which i think is the issue that a lot of new money has has got um they think that um oh, I'm, I'm not assuming that they think anyway i'm just talking about the people i know that are coming to me now you know or you know, i'm getting my hair cut and the hairdresser goes well i've been hearing about bitcoin how do i do that it's because it's become mainstream now, uh, but we are getting close to a peak. And is it one last thing? I, I, let me just check that everyone's still here and they've not they've not they've not left. Okay, we've still got twenty one, not too bad. And then we'll go into the charts. Another thing is that we can easily uh, well, right we can easily pop or consolidate from this level um, and have a miniature bear market. You know, weeks, months, maybe. Um, and still grand scheme of things peak as everyone expects at the four year market cycle. Now, if there's some a shared yeah, market cycles are because everybody believes something's gonna happen. They've happened in the past, that yeah, and, and it's a cyclical event. It's almost a self fulfilling prophecy. But it also gives people um and everybody something to hold on to, which has happened in the past, but market cycles do fail i mean gold has been having market cycles for for decades and decades and within those cycles sometimes the cycles fail right bitcoin's 12 years old it's had two market cycles in full already we're due to end the third market cycle this year uh, or technically next year when when the bear market's finished um and then that would be you know that would be f you know only three cycles so far was it three or was it four anyway it's not many uh, plenty of time for a cycle to fail now the cycle in my opinion is four years because bitcoin has a four-year cycle right uh, i mean a, a halving event every four years so it's could be a coincidence but i think it's quite to me quite obviously correlated that because there's a halving every four years that's got a major role in the fact that the the cycle is four years long right so let's just think about how the halving takes place now forgive me if i'm wrong uh, but I, from what i remember the halving took place last year in the summertime so you know around about here somewhere from what i remember so this is the way that a market cycle has played out so bear market finished a reaccumulation phase then this is just over excitement but uh, but generally speaking when the bear market finishes and the accumulation phase finishes then people feel a bit more confident to go in a bit too overconfident here probably a lot of derivatives and then and then a, and then a pullback then what happens is the uh, the halving takes place around about here mid cycle so one year of bull market second year of bull market and you could argue that, that this is this is all leading up to the halving pricing it in as well uh, and then the halving takes place and it's pretty much nondescript so it's just kind of like pretty rubbish to be honest with you then what happens is the reality of that halving starts to play out 
uh, and uh, it's not priced in anymore. The, it's, uh, the economic reality of that halving actually starts to happen. We also had our quantitative easing as well from the feds that devalued the dollar that speeded this entire thing to the peak. So it's about overvaluation, isn't it? Uh, I think there's the key. Uh, overvaluation here. Uh, pricing it in over here, the reality of it sinking in over here, then you know, the, then the overvaluation thereafter, and then a, a, you know, a, a potential top, even if it's just temporary. So long story short, you know, I'm not, I'm not super bearish. I'm, I'm not either super bullish until we reclaim sixty thousand. I just feel as though uh, this cheat sheet is trying to tell us something here, uh, but it's not as simple as overlaying this onto a Bitcoin chart or we can probably overlay it onto some altcoin charts in all fairness at the moment you probably could um but it's not that simple there's you know we are we're only looking at bitcoin which is literally half the market as it stands at the moment it's literally half the market uh, and so it doesn't really represent that cheat sheet it only represents 50 percent of it the other 50 percent is likely overvalued you now you combine them all together in fact we can do that can't we we'll just have a look at uh total two i've not actually looked at it but i know you can have a look at the uh, the market as a whole um so yeah it doesn't particularly look here i suppose we're looking at it on a weekly let's look at it daily it doesn't particularly look like it's you know the wall street cheat sheet i have to admit but again this is only half the market this is the other half so you've put the two together and you know we, we might be getting close to that um and we'll only really know when the pop happens and then we start to play it out so again another summary of my summary is that um, i am definitely feeling a bit over cautious at the moment um uh, i just think that uh, i think we're heating up too fast um and altcoins a lot of them are potentially looking to be popped uh, even if it's just a full rotation back into Bitcoin, which would then lead to the actual final execution of that pop um, until we go down again and then perhaps maybe consolidate um, properly, you know, for a period of weeks or months.